All right, welcome everyone. Welcome to the celebration of life for Miss Mary Stewart. And um, what a life we have to celebrate. What a life we have to celebrate. And uh, so even though there's always uh, some sadness, sometimes a great deal of sadness when we're separated from our loved ones. Uh, but in this case, at the same time, we, we have to be filled with um, uh, joy as we uh, have witnessed her life down through the ages and now we know where she is and who she's with. Um, so uh, we look forward to just having this time together to celebrate her life and to worship the Lord together. I want to share with you as we begin two passages of scripture. One is from John chapter 14. These are the words of Jesus, but they're beginning with the words of Jesus. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you? that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And now from the last chapter in the Bible, Revelation 22. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. Also, on either side of the river, the tree of life, with its twelve kinds of fruit, yielding its fruit each month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be anything accursed, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and His servants will worship Him. They will see His face, and His name will be on their foreheads. And night will be no more. They will need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. We all believe those words. Ms. Mary Stewart believed those words, but now she realizes the truth of those words in a way that we can only imagine. Hallelujah. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather again this afternoon and celebrate this marvelous person, this marvelous life, Miss Mary Stewart. And we pray that you would bless this service, that Jesus Christ would be lifted up as she would so desire, and that we would give her life in the brief time available a, a fitting uh, memorial as she stands as a testimony to us all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please join me in singing Amazing Grace, hymn 343.
our beloved mother, Mary Alice Holly Stewart, a faithful servant of her Lord Jesus Christ, fittingly passed away at age 101 on Easter Sunday. She was born in Jamaica, Long Island, New York on July 24th, 1922, and was the second of four children born to Mary Creedle and Frank Stefan Holly. After graduating from Sawanica Central High School, she worked as a secretary in the exciting New York City of the early 1940s. During the tumultuous years of World War II, Mary answered the call to serve her country, joining the Navy waves. It was during her service that she met the love of her life, Otis Stewart, with whom she shared a devotion that would last until his death in 2007. Otis worked for the FAA, so they moved many times, embracing new experiences and forging lasting friendships wherever they went. They retired to Hilltop Lakes, Texas in 1980. Mary's unwavering affection for the community was demonstrated in her volunteer efforts. She was active in her church, served as an ECA with the Volunteer Fire Department, helped with Lions Club events, and was secretary for the Pilots Club. Her outgoing nature, warm advice, and sharp wit endeared her to all who had the privilege of knowing her. Her love and support greatly affected the lives of her four children. Claude Holly Stewart, spouse Linda, <coughs> Kathleen Martin, Jackie Choctura, and Annie Earp, spouse Ed, as well as her adoring grandchildren, Mary Holly Choctura, Alexander Martin, Rachel Earp Shemank, spouse Matthew, James P. Earp, spouse Gianna, and Amy Stewart. Her great-grandchildren, Chloe, Claire, and Clay Shemank, will continue to carry her legacy forward. Mary's spirit will forever resonate in the hearts of those who were fortunate enough to call her mother, grandmother, friend, and confidant. She will be deeply missed, but fondly remembered. During Desert Storm, um, Sherry suggested that we video someone here in the chapel that would lift us up. And the first person I thought about was Mary. If she taught you in vacation Bible school, you knew. If she was your neighbor, you knew. If you knew her here at the chapel, you knew. And I knew that Jesus was her very best friend. She was small in statue. She had a grin that, uh, the best grin I've ever seen. But her faith and her love of her best friend Jesus was huge. <laughs> I hope you enjoy this video today. We had fun making it. In fact, we did it twice to get it right. <laughs> so you enjoy this lady, this video, who had a smile that was huge. Today is March 25th, 2020. 
My name is Mary Stewart, and this is my message for you today. I want you to know that I put Jesus Christ first in my prayers and life. When I awake in the morning, the first thing I say is, Thank you, Jesus, for a good night's sleep. If I have not had a good night's sleep, I say, Thank you for getting me through the night. After preparing breakfast for myself, I do my daily meditations. I thank him for his holy scripture guiding me and for all the blessings given. I seek his direction for problems and to be a good witness to others. He lightens my problems and I am able to bear whatever pain or calamities facing me. Jesus says, I am the light. And so he is. I was raised in Long Island, New York by a family that did not attend church. I never knew my dad to go to church, even though he would quote scripture at times. My mother started attending the local Methodist church when I was a teenager and would often request that I go with her. I had many excuses not to. Most of my friends and neighbors were Catholic, as was the family across the street from me. On Sunday mornings, I would often peek at them, leaving the church. The family would all be dressed in their best. These kids that I played with, fought with, and went to school with looked so proud and happy as they walked in front of their parents. One day, seeing the proud parents, I asked God, that when I grew up and married, that I would marry a man that went to church so I could be happy and proud too. It's a prayer that I said on and off for years. After graduating from high school in 1939, World War II was already active in Europe. I worked in New York City in a music union with a small staff. Our boss would alternate our duties so each of us could fill another's position. Their duties included stenography, receptionist, editing letters, operating the mimeograph, and many general tasks. It was a great on-the-job learning experience for me. A few years later, I transferred to Fairchild Precision Instrument Company a subsidiary of Fairchild's. No, subsidiary, just, just, it doesn't come to mind right now. That's okay. In Jamaica, Long Island, I was working in the personnel department. By then, America had joined the war effort after the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. My brother Frank, was already serving in the U.S. Army under General Patton, I decided I would join the Navy. So I enlisted and became a Navy Wade in, I think, July 1943. After boot camp, I was assigned to the Bureau of Naval Personnel in Arlington, Virginia. Unfortunately, my Navy career was brief. My mother had died of spinal meningitis in September, leaving my dad, my teenage sister, and a young boy cousin at home. The Red Cross, in, in, in investigating the situation, decided I was needed at home to aid my dad. I was devastated by my emergency discharge but it proved to be necessary. As it turned out, my dad lost his wife that September, his father on Christmas Day, and his sister in early January of the next year. I was able to be with him during his grief. Back when I was in the waves in D.C., I met Otis W. Stewart, a Texan who was also a Navy man. We met at the USO that I entered while waiting a Navy bus to take me back to my barracks. 
After discharge, I kept up a correspondence with Otis. I must say that on our very first day, Otis took me out to services at a Baptist church in D.C. before dinner and a boat ride up the Potomac River afterwards. So God did hear me years ago, and I married a man who faithfully attended church. After months of marriage and attending church with Otis every Sunday, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was born again, a new creation, and put Jesus into my life completely. If you have not yet turned your life completely over to Jesus Christ, I recommend that you do so right now. You will receive joy and peace immediately and the assurance of going to heaven. What a joy. My prayers are with you. Here is my prayer. That you can say, here is my prayer that you can say right now. But I want you to know that I am 97 years old. I've had a wonderful life with Christ. And now here's the prayer that you can use. You can start out by saying, Dear Jesus, thank you for making it possible for me to find peace with God. I believe that when you died, you were paying the penalty for my sins. I now receive you into my life as my Savior, so I can have forgiveness and never-ending life from God. Thank you for the gift of eternal life. Amen.
family has written a wonderful remembrance about Mrs. Mary and that I have the joy of sharing with you at this time. Remembering our beloved mother, Mary Stewart. Dad's career took us to several states during our formative years. His hoped for job in New York never materialized and he and mom moved to the foreign country of Louisiana. <laughs> where mother had a hard time understanding the language and enduring the heat. <laughs> However, dad's Texas pride led him to ensure that all his children were born in the Lone Star State. Hence, mom yielded to her husband's wishes and moved from Louisiana to Waco to stay with his parents for Holly's birth. Kathleen, Jackie, and Annie are also fortunate to be born in Texas. Our family had a series of moves residing in Alvin, Oklahoma City, Arlington, Virginia, and finally settling in Kansas City, Missouri with mother always making the new location a true home. Despite dad's frequent job-related travels, Mom was ever the optimist. I don't think we're surprised to hear that. She created continuity in the new locations by joining the local First Baptist Church and immersing herself in various roles such as nursery caretaker, Sunday school teacher, leader of the girls auxiliary, and coordinator of vacation Bible school. Mom's church fellowship was very important to her as long as she had church friends, she never felt alone, even though dad was traveling a lot. In fact, her favorite old time hymn was Never Alone. You may have noticed that that hymn is on the book card, but the bookmark that you received today. Creating family memories were important to mom. Each weekend, she planned family adventures such as historical tours, picnics, swimming outings, and zoo trips. She also had a passion for antiques and collected and restored many pieces of furniture. These treasures are now our treasures. Traveling was another of mom's joys. Every summer, we spent at least two weeks in Waco where mom and dad assisted his parents on the farm. En route, we explored various tourist attractions, including state capitals and landmarks. Mom cherished the company of friends, both young and old, and showered her grandchildren with love and attention. From playing games, teaching them to fish, or whipping up animal-shaped pancakes for breakfast, she created long-lasting memories for her family. She also enjoyed outdoor activities and was very athletic. She joined us in swimming, sledding, backyard baseball, jumping rope, and much more. In fact, mom could still jump rope and stand on her head at the age of 70. Mom continued using her secretarial skills by taking notes on Sunday sermons in shorthand, then typing them up to be saved in a sermon file. She also edited and typed Daddy's communications and our school papers. While we were growing up, Mom sewed most of our clothes and made creative Halloween costumes and fun doll clothes. Besides sewing, she enjoyed crocheting, making afghans, lap blankets, hats, dish scrubbies, and one of her special joys was working all year on little crocheted chickens to hand out to the children at church on Easter Sunday. Many of us know about those. 
Speaking of handing out things at church, she found great joy in greeting attendees and giving them peppermint candies, a tradition that continues at Hilltop Chapel to this day. We dearly loved our mother and truly miss her. We find comfort in knowing that she's no longer suffering, but is enjoying the glory of heaven. Gosh, I'm very honored to stand here today. Uh, my mom and dad uh, lived up here and they got to know Otis and Mary very well because Otis had Parkinson's disease and my mother had Parkinson's disease and now I have Parkinson's disease. Uh, <clears throat> and so mom and dad and Mary and Otis would go to the Parkinson's support group together and there's where a friendship began that <clears throat> Mom just fell in love with, with Mary and her sweetness. And uh, Mom made Mary promise that if God took Mother first, Mary would take care of my dad, because nobody else on this earth would. <laughs> <laughs> she knew Mary, being so sweet, <clears throat> would have no problem with taking care of my father. I, uh, I, I have a little confession to make that this morning during the prayer uh, Wayne gave, he said, we're all here in our Sunday best. Well, this morning, <clears throat> I went to put my pants on and my hem came out of my pants leg. <laughs> I didn't have time to <clears throat> go through the cabinet and go through the closet and look for something that would fit. And I thought, Mary wouldn't care. <laughs> she wouldn't, you know. I could say, Mary, I came with broken pants and she wouldn't have cared. Um, one time, I got over to the nursing home at the same time that she did to visit Odie, and we're going down the hall, and there's a woman <clears throat> in a wheelchair going, help me, help me, just over and over and over again, help me. And Mary goes up to her and pats her on the shoulder, and she says, I can't help you, but Jesus can. Um, Oh, <clears throat> Mary went on the walk to Emmaus. And if you ever known anything about the walk to Emmaus, um, they, they, you get agape, it's gifts that people have made for you anonymously. And the second uh, walk after Mar the walk that Mary went on, she made 65 of those little roosters, one for every person in, in the walk. And at the next fourth day meeting, she spoke and, <clears throat> and she, she said, and you know those little roosters I made? Or that, that you got on your walk? And everybody goes, yes. And she says, I made them, 65 of them. And I ain't gonna do that again. <laughs> Another story about her being in Emmaus is there's one part where they get everybody, the whole team and uh, pilgrims together and they take a picture. And the photographer was having trouble uh, getting everybody to smile. And I think, Where's Kathleen? Kathleen, how old was she when she went on her walk? Do you know? At least 95. And the, the, port, the photographer was trying to get uh, everybody to smile. And here's a little 95-year-old lady that says, Just say sex! <laughs> and she was a Baptist. <clears throat> the... Uh, the one thing that I want to leave you with, the thought and, and visual, um, is her sparkling eyes. She showed everybody the love of Jesus Christ through her eyes. And can you imagine when she got to heaven, Easter morning, no less, not just Easter, but Easter morning, <clears throat> and Jesus saw those sparkling eyes. Thank you.
Well, I don't want to go now. <laughs> um, it's funny, the things you internalize, I'm a grandchild, and that you internalize from your grandparents, you don't even know it, but after Margaret's movie, I remembered Grandma Mary saying it was very important that she marry a Christian, and you just remember these things, at listening to your grandparents, and then I married a Christian, it's like Lutheran, but saying, um, <laughs> and I just can't, can't imagine my life at all without, that's the most important thing you could do, I think, is for a woman, is who you marry, <laughs> and that would be very hard to be, to be married to a non-Christian, and so I'm glad that she kind of said that and made sure that we knew these things growing up and um, that I married a Christian. Um, but she was one of the best grandmothers ever. Um, playing with us, she took us to the Texas shape, shaped swimming pool, to the lakes, fishing, camping. She played cards. I don't know if it's allowed, but uh, the list goes on. Um, she also supported all of our educations, our careers, um, but as we all know, what was even more important to her than having fun, an education, an amazing career, was her faith and passing that faith along. She was constantly sharing her faith with us, with us and apparently everybody else too, it sounds like. Uh, she took us to church, she took us to Sunday school, we went to vacation Bible school, she read the Bible to us, and she also shared her personal walks with Christ. And um, just thinking about that before today, um, I was remembering 2 Timothy in chapter 1, verse 5, when Paul tells Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and your mother, Eunice, and now I'm sure it dwells in you as well. And that is Grand Mary's legacy. That is her Christian faith, which she passed on to her children and then to her grandchildren. So we love you and we miss you already. My cousin, Mary Holly, Dr. Mary Holly, <laughs> uh, she also read something, but she couldn't be here today. She lives in Portland, Oregon, and so I'll read what Mary Holly said about Mary Holly. <laughs> she said, I am the granddaughter and namesake of Mary Alice Holly Stewart. I regret not being able to attend her memorial today, but I wanted to write some words about my wonderful grandmother, my Grand Mary. We all called her Grand Mary. <laughs> My grandmother taught me to be kind and thoughtful and to count my blessings every day. Her gratitude was contagious and a welcome reminder that each day is needed, that each day is indeed a gift. My fondest memory of Grand Mary is maybe eight years ago, I was visiting Hilltop Lakes and one night our family was returning to Grand Mary's from a Christmas party at a friend's house. Everyone went inside, and I asked Grand Mary if she wanted to stay outside with me and look up at the night sky. She said yes. We stood in the middle of Sammy Sneed Drive with our heads tilted back looking at the stars. Grand Mary told me that when she and my grandfather Odie first moved into their house at Hilltop, at night they would often lay on a blanket on the golf course and stargaze. Sometimes, Grand Mary said, we would even see a shooting star. No sooner had she finished speaking than a shooting star streaked across the sky. Amazed, she and I agreed that it was Odie saying hello. That occurrence alone would have been special, but something even more spectacular happened. Another shooting star flew across the sky, and then another, and another. We must have seen dozens of them that night. Odie was not just saying hello, he was showering us in light and love. Now Grand Mary has left to join Odie, but when we hold our dearly departed in our hearts, they never truly leave us. If you love the way Grand Mary loved, and if you pause sometimes to look up at the night sky, 
Don't be surprised if, you sh if she sends you her love in the form of a shooting star. Like the shooting stars she and I saw those years ago, she burned bright, but not for long enough. And like those shooting stars, she is gone, but not forgotten. Grand Mary lives on when we recognize that our blessings are as numerous as the stars, and she lives on when we acknowledge that our capacity, capacity to love each other is as vast as the heavens above. Rest in peace, Grand Mary. You were and are greatly loved and immensely appreciated. Thank you, Swin. Thank you, Rachel, for that beautiful remembrance. I, I do want to reassure you that at Hilltop Lakes Chapel, we do recognize Lutherans as Christians. <laughs> However, no one here has ever touched a deck of cards. <laughs> that was great, thank you. I want to share a passage of scripture with you and, and just, just a brief thought or two on this, uh, what really is a great occasion. And this passage of scripture is from Matthew chapter 25. And that's a chapter of scripture that can be very sobering. It can also be very, very encouraging when we're looking and celebrating upon a life like Mary Stewart's. But here's Matthew 25, 14 through 23, and these are the words of Jesus. For it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted to them his property. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. He who had received the five talents went at once and traded with them and made five talents more. So also he who had the two talents made two talents more. But he who had received the one talent went and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those servants came and settled accounts with them. And he who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five talents more, saying, Master, you delivered to me five talents. Here, I have made five talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. And he also, and he also who had the two talents came forward saying, Master, you delivered to me two talents. Here, I have made two talents more. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little. I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. A hundred and one years is a long time. And when we gather here memorializing the departure of one who lived faithfully unto the Lord for over a hundred years, then it is a holy moment. This is the life well lived. This is the life of success. This is the life that can be celebrated. Ms. Mary's passing may not have made the national news, but it made the heavenly news. And more than that, she is now in the presence of the one who called her who saved her, who walked with her decade after decade, and who used her to bless the lives of family, friends, and many, many children. This is the life that many miss living, the life that so many do not see the real value of until it is too late. 
the life lived faithfully unto the Lord. Throughout all of her amazing and diverse life experiences, the constant has been her relationship with Jesus Christ and flowing from that relationship, her love for other people. Mrs. Mary got it right. She got it right forever. Let us all take note. I would say this morning, if anyone ever preached their own funeral, she definitely did it. Even in that video, she never anticipated probably that at her memorial service that would be shown. Hard to add anything to that. I'm not really going to try to add to that. But I just have a few, um, one or two thoughts of my own to share with you. But And also, just things about her that just flowed into my mind as I reflected upon her life. She loved God. She loved her husband. She loved her family. She loved her church. She loved her friends. She loved her country and community. She loved children. She loved to smile and to laugh. She had a great wit and she was wonderfully candid. I have to share with you, the, the last time I had the privilege of visiting with her and she was sort of in and out of some of full awareness, but she was, um, but she was talking. In fact, I, she talked the whole time. I pretty much just sat and, but uh, one thing that she was talking about, some things that some other people were doing and she was concerned about having her car worked on. But she said to me several times, they don't know, and I don't know, and you don't know. <laughs> She's right, I didn't know. I don't know half the time, so, but she was wonderful to be around. Uh, a joy to know and to be around. She did all that she could to contribute to others. She was a wonderful person and a godly woman. And I am honored to have known her. Just one or two thoughts about this parable that we read. First of all, you, you notice I left off the end of the parable about the, the servant who just buried, who just buried his talent, because really um, that part of the story does not apply to Miss Mary. It's really beyond the scope of what we need to look at today. <coughs> But we do notice, I hope, that the faithful servant who had received five talents, and by the way, talent was a sum of money, but the faithful servant who had received five talents and the faithful servant who had received two talents, they received the very same commendation from the Lord. The very same. And so the message in that sense is very clear from this parable that what God gives us, he expects us to use. Some get this, some get that, some, we could even say more than others, uh, more opportunities. But what God gives us, he expects us to use, and Mary Stewart did this. Faithfully, beautifully, with a great attitude, and she did it her whole life long. She was a faithful person. And now she has also heard from her Lord and Savior, well done, good and faithful servant. May we all seek to follow her example. Amen. Church, in honor of Mary's favorite hymn, we will sing Never Alone. Uh, if you had a, found a bookmark in your um, bulletin this morning, the words are printed on the back. Uh, if you don't have one, that's okay. You can just soak up 
the words uh, as the choir and the congregation sings. So if you're able, please rise and join me in singing Never Alone. celebrate this life and our celebration is not over. There's a reception that follows in the fellowship hall to which everyone is invited. If you're not familiar with the chapel, the shortest route to the fellowship hall is through those doors to your right, my left, and once you go through those doors, you'll see the door open into the fellowship hall. We're, the family is not going to have a pass-by line this morning because there is a reception. So the request is everybody just Move to the fellowship hall, and you'll have plenty of times to visit and greet and, uh, and uh, give your uh, best love and wishes to the family. But, but uh, we won't do it, do that in here. And as we uh, close in prayer together, we'll also bless the food that's waiting on us in the fellowship hall. May we pray together. Our Heavenly Father, how we do rejoice at this life well lived unto you a life of witness and testimony until her very last breath we know that we can't begin to imagine all the good that you used Mary Stewart to accomplish we praise you for it we thank you for it we pray for this family that even in the midst of their loss and the sorrow that they will experience that you will fill them with a love and joy uh, knowing where she is and who she's with and that we will all see each other again. We thank you for this. We thank you for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who's made all of this wonder and love and joy possible. We give praise to him and we thank you. And also our Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this food that we will receive together. We ask you to bless it to our bodies. Bless our strength to your service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>